energy is the ability to do work. We just learned about work. Work is when you apply a force in a direction and something moves. So we talked about if someone was lifting weights, they apply a force upward, the weights moved upwards, that person did work. Well, that work created some energy. It created gravitational potential energy, and we're going to talk more about that in the future, but when the person did work, they're actually, that work is being transformed into energy. Similarly, energy can be converted into work. Okay, some examples up here. Do work by winding up this spring. Energy gets stored into a spring, and then the mouse can move. Okay, this crane is going to do work by lifting the beam upward and that work is going to be stored as gravitational potential energy and the same with the car that was lifted upward. So next we're going to talk about some specific types of energy. The first one is going to be elastic potential energy. We give an object elastic potential energy when we stretch it like a spring or an elastic band. It's called potential energy because the energy is stored. Let's look at this in a little more detail. When I stretch back the sling on this catapult, the elastic potential is stored in the sling. That's why we call it potential energy. Potential energy means it's stored. Now I can release this energy by stretching it. It's held at the moment and then I'm going to release the energy. Here goes. Ah. Sorry. Yes, the potential energy was released as kinetic energy, okay? The potential energy changed into kinetic energy. Told you to wear your safety glasses, didn't I? Just to emphasize again, all the elastic potential energy turned into kinetic energy when I released the catapult. You see, that's the point about energy. You can't just get rid of it or destroy it. It's always got to change from one type of energy to another. What is it, boys? Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change from one form to another. Let me demonstrate again. <laughs> Let's start running, lads. <laughs> so you see, the potential energy that I had stored in there turned into kinetic energy and uh, heat and sound as well when it hit him. It was a good shot, that wasn't it? <laughs> Hey, yeah. hey, don't know where you're laughing now. Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. No. Please note that the science geeks used in our experiments are genetically engineered and feel no pain. If they're damaged, we simply grow another one. It's either that or we use cute furry animals. What would you prefer? Okay, in the video you just saw, they talked a lot about elastic potential energy, and they kept saying it was the energy of something that was being stretched. In truth, it's the energy of something that is either compressed or stretched, so it can be either of those two things. The elastic potential energy is a scalar, which means it does not have a direction associated with it. Another thing is it is only positive. Okay, we could have positive or negative work, but we can only have positive elastic potential energy. So, how much elastic potential energy do you have? Well, the equation is the elastic potential energy is equal to 1 half k times x squared. So let's look at what these variables are. x is how far you either compress or stretch the, sp the spring. k is the spring constant. It's measured in newtons per meter. The spring constant tells you how easy or difficult it is to stretch the spring. So think about your pen or a pen that has a push top where you push and there's a spring and the pen, tip of the pen will come out, okay? So that spring has a very small spring constant in comparison to the struts of a car, okay? The struts or the shocks of a car are going to have a large spring constant. 
you're not going to be able to even notice that it's going to bend if you just push on it with your thumb. So the spring constant measures how stiff a spring is, okay? And again, PE elastic means the elastic potential energy, and it is measured in joules. In fact, all of the energies that we talk about, we are going to measure in joules. Okay, so let's do a quick problem here. It says, a spring is stretched from an initial length of 15 centimeters to a length of 30 centimeters. What is the spring constant if it takes 80 joules of energy to stretch the spring? So I'm starting out, here's my spring, and it is 15 centimeters long. And then I stretch it out such that it becomes 30 centimeters long. Okay, so we've got our picture. It's always our first step. The next thing we want to do is write down our givens. So, well, what do we know? It takes 80 joules of energy to stretch the spring. We're talking about energy to stretch a spring. So we're talking about elastic potential energy, which I'm gonna abbreviate with just a little lowercase letter e there. And that is 80 joules. Okay, the other variables that we're gonna have are k, our spring constant, which is what we're trying to find. We don't know that. And x. x is the distance that the spring is stretched or compressed. So when the spring is just sitting there on the table, it's 15 centimeters long when it's not stretched or compressed at all. Then we stretch it to 30 centimeters. So we need to know how much did it get stretched or compressed. Well, to find that, we simply subtract the two. So it ends up the spring is stretched 15 centimeters. Now, we always try to have our units our base units in meters for distance. So we need to convert this 15 centimeters to meters, make it 0.15 meters. We are trying to find the spring constant K. So now we're going to look at our equation that we had in the last page, the potential energy that is elastic. So elastic potential energy is equal to one half the spring constant times the distance the spring is stretched or compressed squared. Substitute in 80 is equal to one half our spring constant times our distance that is stretched. Well, it went from 15 to 30, so it got stretched 15 centimeters squared. Go ahead and start solving. First, I'm going to do is simplify the right hand side. 0.15 squared is 0 0.0225. Then I'm going to go ahead and simplify some more. Half of that is 0 0.01125. Divide both sides. Our spring constant is 7,111 and 1 tenth newtons. Okay? And our spring constant, oh, newtons per meter is always measured in newtons per meter. It's how many newtons it takes to stretch one meter. 